ora, ciao ciao. Hey, I found this fabulous book about an American artist. The story's called Action Jackson, and it's all about an American artist called Jackson Pollock. This story is written by Jeannie Greenberg and Sandra Jordan, illustrated by Robert Andrew Parker. And the publisher is Francis Lincoln Children's Books. In the afternoon, Jackson Pollock puts on his paint splattered boots and walks across the yard. The wind blows in from the gardener's bay, bringing the scent of salt marshes and sea lavender. His eyes miss nothing. Sunlight on the tree branches, tangled stalks of blackberry bushes, Vessels crawling in the grass underfoot. He's doing what a lot of artists do. They observe things around them. Kōkor, the crow he tamed, that's a bit there, flies down and lands on his shoulder. His border collie, Jip, runs in circles, demanding a walk across the fields and down a country road to the wide, sandy beach. But Jackson turns and keeps going. I wonder where he's going. Let's find out. The grey weathered barn used to be filled with rusty machinery, old fishing gear and broken tools. Now it's his art studio, a place for painting. Some artists put a canvas on an easel or hang it on a wall. Not Jackson. He spreads his art like a sheet, smoothing it flat with his large hands. He wants his paintings to be big, big as the sky out west where he grew up, flat as the marshland behind the house. Sunlight pokes through the cracks in the boards and flies buzz in the dusty studio air. He sits silent on the floor, staring at the blank canvas. I'm wondering why he might be staring. Let's find out. Some artists cover the canvas with a base coat of white paint, not Jackson. He wants the paint to soak into the surface, leaving bare patches peeking through the stains of colour. Some painters use oil paint or watercolour, not Jackson. He'll use ordinary house paint from the hardware store to make this painting. Some artists paint pictures of flowers, or people, or landscapes, not Jackson. He expresses his thoughts and feelings directly on the canvas, calling it energy and motion made visible. And still he sits by the canvas, the cans of enamel, brushes stiff with dried paint, knives, sticks, a spatula and canvases, waiting. There are all the things that he uses to help him make his paintings. At last he stands. He chooses a stick and dips it into a can of syrupy paint. Slowly he circles the canvas, stepping around the edges, straddling the corners. Black lines form a tangled web. Now he chooses a brush, working towards the middle. Sprays of colour tan, teal, yellow and white. An athlete with a paintbrush, he uses his whole body to make the painting. Layers build up with each gesture, new colours emerging, blending and disappearing into the wet surface. He swoops and leaps like a dancer, paint trailing from a brush that doesn't touch the canvas. I want to make a longer and longer line I want it to keep going. Well, and there you can see his brush with the drips of paint. It's pretty cool that he doesn't actually let it touch the canvas. Hours go by like minutes. Suddenly he feels exhausted, used up. His inspiration gone. Things get in the way of the flow, like roots blocking a soil line. He puts down the brush and goes into the house to help make supper. His mind filled with thoughts, a 
about the wet painting back on the studio floor. So he's always thinking about what it is that he's working on. The next afternoon, Jackson prowls around the canvas studying his work. But he doesn't pick up a brush instead. He walks along the beach, past the sandy marshes and the tall Spartina grass that waves in the breeze. He spends hours sitting on a grassy dune watching the gulls. In the barn, the layers of paint dry. Almost a week passes before he dips a brush and begins his stance again. What is he thinking? Does he see the sunlit beach, the pattern of waves, the interlacing branches of the trees, the lush summer grass outside his studio? I don't know where my pictures come from. They just come and the paint flows. Like the Native American sand painters he saw as a boy out west, he moves around the canvas, coaxing the paint into loops and curves. On the floor, I am much more at ease. I can walk round it, work from the four sides, be in the painting. Fireworks splatters of rosy pink, twisting ropes of white, spangles of silver, a lavender glow where pink and blue black net. Wow. Jackson listens to a jazz recording in the evening. He likes musicians who improvise, inventing their own melodies as they play. While he paints, the notes spin over and over in his memory. Swish and swish again. The rhythm of the brush matches the rhythm of the music. If a penny fell out of his pocket, he would leave it. An insect lands in the wet paint and there it stays. Nails and tacks become part of the texture. He caresses the surface with sticky paint-stained hands. One, then two, handprints across the canvas. So that's really interesting to note that he just leaves things. I think you and I might want to pick out a, a fly if it landed on the canvas, but no, he leaves it there. And he really gets involved, making sure his hands um, smooth out the paint and make really big textures. His eyes move up and down, back and forth. With light steps, he follows the sweep of his brush. He stops in a pool of paint, pauses. Paint, paint, and more paint. Dripping, pouring, flinging. The painting has a life of its own. I try to let it come through. Again, he stops. He climbs a ladder to look down at the whole canvas. Every muscle aches. But his eyes, his mind, and his heart know the painting is finished. I particularly like seeing his shadow behind him. And this is a copy of one of his most famous paintings. It's called Lavender Mist, and it was uh, painted in 1950, so quite a long time ago. It uh, hangs in the National Gallery of Arts in Washington, D.C. in the United States of America. And it's quite big, it's very, very well thought out, and a lot of people have been to see it. Some people will be shocked when they see what he has created. Some angry, some confused, some excited. Some filled with a happiness they can hardly explain. But everyone will agree. Jackson Pollock is doing something original, painting in a way that no one has ever seen before. So when Jackson Pollock was doing this type of painting, he really pushed out people's thoughts about what painting should be. And a lot of people have since um, copied his style. 
For the next few days, he and his wife Lee work in their vegetable garden. They drive into town with their Model A Ford. He digs for clams at the beach. At the weekend, friends drop by for a party. So life carries on after he'd finished doing his painting. It will be another week for the thick paint to dry. Then Jackson and Lee will tack the canvas to the studio wall. That's a very big painting, so they need a very big place to hang it. Jackson sits silent, staring at the blank canvas spreading on the floor, spread on the floor of the barn, waiting. Soon he will dip his brush into a can of paint, lifting it high in the air to begin again. I really enjoy reading about other people's art. Perhaps you might like to try some of Jackson's art style. Don't forget, you drip the paint if you can, and you can use all sorts of things to help you with the painting. Don't put the brush on the canvas, but lift it high, and maybe even use your hands. Hey, until next time, kai kite.